Hey guys and welcome back to another Unrangent 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be going over a spectate system. So in this, when the player dies, they're going to be able to spectate other players and move between the different players' camera views as well. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So as you can see, I've got four different players in the level right now. What I'm going to do is simply just get knocked and then wait until my player dies. Now this knocked and revival system is something which I've set up in previous videos. However, you do not need to use this and do this for this video. Simply all you need is a way for your player to die and then I'm going to go over spectating them but I'm not going to go over dying and knock down in this video because again I have already done that in previous videos which I'll leave a link to in the description down below. But as you can see my player up on the top right has now died so what I'm going to do if I, is if I press the arrow I can scroll between the different players that I want to spectate and if I press down arrow I can go between them backwards so I can spectate next and spectate previous. So you can see now I'm spectating the character in the lower left so if I play as that one, you can see it's going to follow the correct camera angle and view like so. And also my player will not be able to control them, they are just spectating them. And again this will work for all of them as well, working perfectly like so, and while they're alive they will not be able to spectate, you can only spectate once you are dead. So again this is what we're going to be setting up today, so without further ado, let me do this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to open up your game mode blueprint. So for me that's content, third person VP, blueprints, third person game mode. And in here, we're just going to do something very, very simple. We're going to hit the plus variable first to create a variable, naming this players alive or players in game or whatever you like. And this is simply going to be a list or an array of the different players in which we can spectate. So we're going to make this variable type to be character, and we just want to character object reference. And we're also going to make this an array, so again, we can store a list of all the players in which we want to be able to spectate. So we're going to compile and save that. And now in order to actually be able to dynamically change this to work dependent on how many players and which players are in the game, we're going to right click and add a custom event, naming this add player to list or to array or whatever you want. And very simply, we're going to drag out players alive, get players alive. Actually, I might rename this to be player list instead, as that makes more sense to me. Compile that and we're going to drag out this array and we're simply going to get an add under array like so connecting that into the add player to list. Then we're just going to drag out the array element into the custom event and you can see we've got a new item there. I'm going to rename new item to just be player. So we can compile and save that and that is all we need to do. So now when we want to add a player to the list we're just going to call this custom event and input the correct player which we want which will then be added into this array of all the current players which we can spectate. So again that is all we need to do in the game of blueprint, very very simple. And what you can also do is you can make another custom event for removing a player from the list and just use remove item, inputting the player in there, but I don't want to do that. But again, it's very easy to do that if you want to, you just do it the same way really. So we're going to close that and then we're going to open up our character blueprint, which again for me is content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. And in here, what we want to do first, if you haven't already, is we want to create a reference to our game mode blueprint. So that's so we can easily access it. So I'm going to be doing this off of event begin play here. So I'm going to add a pin to my sequence, drag off of then two, and simply cast to the third person game mode, as that is the game mode I'm using, with the object being get game mode. And as third person game mode, I'm simply going to right click, promote to variable, naming this one game mode reference. And also off of event begin play, after we've set this game mode reference, we're also going to drag out that and call function add player to list. So again, this is how we're adding the player to the array, and we're gonna drag out a player and get a reference to self. So what we're doing is when this character and this player spawns in the level, it's gonna fire off this add player to list function and add itself. So it's adding this current player character into that array of the players which we can spectate. Obviously, once we're dead, we can then spectate with these different players and characters inside of that list and array. And that is again, how we're adding the players to the list nice and simple. Now we're going to actually set up spectating and changing cameras between the different players. So this is also nice and simple. I'm just going to come over to the right here, find some empty space, and then to start off with I'm going to right click, adding a custom event, and I'm going to name this one spectate next player. And then underneath this I'm going to right click, add another custom event, naming this spectate previous player. Now you can just have it as only next if you want, but I think having next and previous is always going to be a good idea as well. And then in the middle of these two, what we're going to do is drag in a reference to our game mode. So we call our game mode reference there. 
and again that's so we can nice and easily and quickly access it without having to cast each and every time. So if we drag out of this we can now get the player list which is the array we just made and set up in the game mode blueprint and out of this what we're going to do is we're going to get a copy like so and now this is going to allow us to access the player which we want to spectate out of this list. But you can see we need to input an array index in there to figure out which player we actually want to spectate. So we need to set up finding that number now. So we're going to right click that, promote it to a variable, naming this current player or spectating player, whatever it is you want really. Again, this is the integer which we're going to be changing to then change which player we are spectating so we can access different players from the array. So what we also need to do is drag out of the player list array again and we're going to get the length. And again, this is now just going to return the amount of elements in the array. So get the number of items in the array. So we know how many players that are inside the array. Because let's say there's four players we can spectate. We don't want to go up to number five because that's not going to give us a player. So if we get to player four, we then want to reset it back to player zero. So we're going in a constant loop. So that is the thing we're going to be setting up. So doing that is very simple. Let's start with spectate next player first. So we're going up through the array. So we're going to get current player, which is the integer we just created. And out of this, we're going to get an integer plus an integer, simply just adding one because we want to be going to the next integer in the list. But again, we want to check to see if this is at the maximum amount. So we're going to drag out of this and get an equal equal integer. But the bottom value is going to be the length of the playlist which we just found. So again, if we are at the end of the amount of players in the list, so we've reached a maximum, this will fire true. So to check if it's true or false, we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, execution going into the custom event, condition being the equal equal there. So true means we are at the maximum limit. However, sorry, I've just realized one thing. We don't want to see if this is at the end. We want to see if it's at the end plus one. For example, if we go from four to five with the maximum being four, it will recognize we've set five and then reset it. We don't want to reset it once we've reached four, so once we reach the end. So we're gonna come out of length again, get an integer plus an integer, adding one, and that is what is gonna go into the equal equal integer like so. So I hope that also makes sense. So again, if it's the length plus one, then we've gone too far, so we want to reset it. So again, true, we've gone too far. We're going to set current player to zero because the start of the array is always at zero because in programming, we start counting from zero instead of one. So this is always gonna go back to the start of the array. But if it's false and we're not at the end yet, we don't want to restart the array. We're gonna set current player to just be whatever it was, which we got current player plus one. So we're going to drag out the plus one, connecting that into there. I'm just going to double click this to get some root nodes to keep it looking nice and organized. So I hope that makes sense. So now we've figured out what the array index is for the player which we want to spectate. And again, this is already going to be going into this get copy since we've connected that integer in there. So now we know which player we want to be spectating, we now just need to spectate that player. So to simply do that, we can right click get player controller. Dragging out the return value, we're going to get a set view target with blend, connecting the execution into both of the set current player like so. So again, whenever we finish setting the player, we're then going to spectate them. And the new view target is going to be the get a copy like so. And that is simply all we need to do. So once we've determined which player we want to spectate, we're then going to spectate it by setting our view target to be the same one they have. So we're gonna be looking through whatever it is that they are seeing, which again works for both third and first person. Whatever it is that player is seeing, we will now also see. Blend time, I'm gonna leave a zero so it just snaps between them. You can increase this if you want. If you do, it kind of animates it towards that player, but I don't think that's gonna to look too good for a spectate system. However, you can of course put it on there if you wanted to. So even if you had a 0.5, that would just do it really quickly, which might look good for what you want. So again, now we've set up spectating to the next player, which is gonna perfectly work. It's gonna loop continuously throughout the array. But I also want to make it sure so I can go back one to spectate the previous player. So that is basically the same thing here, just pretty much the opposite. So what we're gonna do is get the current player again, drag out this and get an integer minus an integer this time, but again, leaving it as minus one. So we just have a one in there like so. Then we're gonna drag out of this and get an equal equal integer once again. But this time we're not gonna check in to see if it's anything to do with the length. We're just gonna do minus one. Because again, an array starts at zero. So we want to go from the first one minus one. So we know if we've gone too far back 
and obviously 0 minus 1 is going to be minus 1. So that's where I've got that value from here. Let's get into the next player, it was the maximum plus 1. Going backwards, it's minimum minus 1, which we don't need to do because that's always going to be the same because an array always starts at 0. We again want to check this in a branch, so we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting the condition into that equal equal and the execution into the custom event. And again, true, we're going to set the current player. And if it is true, that means we want to restart back from the end of the array this time, because we're, we're going backwards. So we've gone too far, now we want to restart. So we're going to simply just set the current players to the maximum length of the current array. So the maximum amount of players we have, which we can spectate, we're going to start spectating the last one in the array. And off of false, we just want to keep going backwards. We've not reached the limit yet, so we're just going to keep going. So again, that is going to be whatever is in this current player, minus one, like so. And again, what we're going to do now is simply just put both of these into a set view target with blend, as we did previously, with the new view target being the get a copy, like so. And again, set this up how you want, for example, the blend time, but I'm not going to be doing that one. And if we compile and save, that is that part of the code set up. So we can now spectate the next and previous player like so. I hope this all makes sense for you. Again, what we're doing is simply just going up and down an array, choosing that current element, which is a player, and then telling the code to look through that player's view. So now all we need to do is call these custom events. So I'm gonna be doing that off of the up and down arrow. So you can make these as action mappings if you want, but I'm not gonna bother right now. I'm just gonna right click and get the up arrow keyboard event and the down arrow keyboard event, like so. What I also wanna do is make sure that the player is dead before they can actually spectate. So they have to be dead in order to spectate. They can't do it while they're still alive. So for that, I have a Boolean already made called is dead, which I'm gonna simply check in a branch like so by holding down B, left clicking to get a branch as we went over earlier. Now, if you don't have this Boolean already, I'd recommend creating it because this is great for not taking damage while you're dead and not being able to do other stuff or being able to do other stuff while you're dead. And all I've done is created the Boolean, left its default value as false, and I'm setting it to true on this part of the code here because for me, this is where the player is dead. This is where they die. So just set it to true when your player dies. And then off of up, is dead, true. I'm simply going to spectate next player as for me the up arrow makes sense to go next and down arrow is going to be spectate previous player because again that makes the most sense for me and now this should be the code all done and working for us so we can compile save and hit play to test this out so again let me just kill one of these players which i can now start in the top right once it's knocked i'm going to wait for it to die and i'll get back to you once it has died so the player is now dead if I was to press up arrow, you can see we're going to be spectating between all the different players like so. And you can see it's looping through them. And if I press down arrow, we're going to start going backwards through the array as well. So this is working perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video, which we've done everything we want to do. As you can see, we've got this system in which the player can die and then they can change camera views from spectating different players. And if I were to then move the player, which we are spectating, you can see that does actually work. So I think I went on the wrong one. There we go. You see it does actually view the player which we are currently spectating. So again, if I just change the current player, it does work perfectly like so. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like, subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.